Welcome to the Healers Cafe, conversations on health and healing with Mano Belize, a retired and deregistered naturopathic physician with 30 plus years of experience. Here you will discover engaging and informative conversations between experienced healers, covering all aspects of healing, the personal journey, the journey of the practitioner, and the amazing possibilities for our own body and spirit. So welcome to the Healers Cafe. And today I have with me Jamie Lee Grace, and she's an Amazon number one best-selling author. She's a speaker, and she's formerly co-presenter of UK's um, biggest radio uh, station, which is BBC Radio. And anyway, I've sort of read her whole um, uh, bio, including TEDx talk on sobriety rocks. Who knew? <laughs> and so I'm, I feel like I'm just going to introduce you as a family constellation NLP practitioner, as well as with a, a real passion and a, a big shift that happened regarding um, sobriety. Mm. So yeah, so welcome. And, you know, and the purpose of this podcast is to have real discussions. Um, and yeah, spontaneously as well. <laughs> no, mm-hmm. Yeah, I love it. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, I I, I do all of those things. I do kind of wear quite a few hats. So um, um, I'm probably best known for the work that I do um, around holistic living, which I've been doing for absolutely years. But but yes, you're right. My in recent years, my absolute passion is sharing this piece about ditching the booze. I don't call it giving up alcohol because we've got there's nothing to give up right so I I'm I'm really hot on language so I call it ditching the booze um and and the reason that that is so kind of relevant is because for me you know I was queen of holistic living in inverted commas you know right writing Amazon number one best-selling books and um I was a Hay House author and 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 speaker and uh, you know there wasn't really anything that I didn't kind of talk about and share um, around holistic living. Um, and yet, although I was kind of queen of this, this, uh, this, this whole world of, of natural healing and health and well-being and organic skincare and literally <laughs> everything, I was stepping around this huge elephant in the room that was alcohol. And for years, years and years and years. And I just didn't see it. I just literally didn't see it uh, until I did. And then when I finally saw it and I realized, wow, actually, you know, for, for all I'm meant to uh, care about my health and well-being, I'm actually, um, you know, taking this toxic link- liquid every single day, pretty much. And, uh, and I'm caught in the alcohol trap. And, I, and it was such a um, such a blow when I realized, oh, wow, I thought I was in control of my health and well-being. Um, and, and it was a bit of a shock, you know, and particularly when I realized that, you um, it's not as easy as I had thought to just simply stop when you are caught in the alcohol trap. And I certainly didn't fit the picture of someone who would call themselves an alcoholic, which is not a word I ever use. Um, I didn't fit that picture. I wasn't at rock bottom. I never had a day off work. I, you know, I would, nobody else would know there was any issue at all. Um, so I certainly didn't fit that picture. So I certainly wouldn't be rocking up to rehab or calling AA or, or speaking to a GP. Like, why would I do that? I was just waking up at 3 a.m. knowing that something was wrong. Um, and of course, I thought I was the only person who felt that way. But of course, I now realize millions of people are caught in that alcohol trap. So, uh, you know, they're not at rock bottom yet, but they're also not OK. Mm. so is it is it the symptoms that your body started producing like waking at 3 a.m mm. that kind of went oh Which is your liver talking to you of course <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's right. yeah and then that made you go wait a minute what am I doing it was a combination of things actually it was partly physical kind of reactions but mostly it was the 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 kind of um 
uh, the kind of it was the unco- it was the messages from the unconscious mind really you know the messages that I'd wake up at three a.m. and and a voice would be saying to me what are you doing stop it this has to stop this is not who you are this is not authentic with anything you're meant to do it's not okay and it would be so clear and so strong that voice but then by six o'clock the next evening you know the wine which would fly in and say oh Oh, it's a lovely sunny day you know you've been so busy and the kids are looked after so you know go and have a lovely Sauvignon Blanc and I'd be straight back down the booze elevator mm. um and I, I was caught in the trap as so many people are so um so yes but but yes it was physical too um because I was generally quite healthy um I'm very grateful that I got away with it in inverted commas right. for the most part Mm-hmm. Um, because of my very healthy diet, because of my um, of the you know mountains of supplements and various other things, I I I'm probably fortunate. It could have been a lot worse than it was. I don't think I've ever. I don't think I was completely thrown clear. I just had some really awful dental issues, and I can't help but think, oh my goodness, I I don't think that would have come about if I'd not been drinking for so long. But anyways, you know, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll never know. But the, the point I'm trying to make is. I think it's a combination of both the physical symptoms, which start to creep up on you. Um, but really what what usually kickstarts people into making the change is when, you know, that the, that that voice is really telling them it's enough. Mm-hmm. OK, yeah, no, because I was wondering, um, I haven't heard that voice yet. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the thing is, I, I mean, let's let's just say for starters, I'm not um kind of preaching prohibition right no, no, I, uh, at, at, at all uh, I'm completely non-judgmental in my approach and yes. I always say to people it's not uh, this is not about me saying you should not drink it's it, it's simply a question that I think everyone should ask themselves and that question is could my life be better physically right. and emotionally without booze mm-hmm. now if you're someone who has an off switch right and you don't have any issue with 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 alcohol and you you when you've had enough you've had enough and all good then then maybe the answer to that question will be no I'm 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 good Mm -hmm. but if I'd asked myself honestly that question six years ago would your life be better physically and emotionally without the booze oh hell yes of course of course it would yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I I do love the question because um, you you mentioned you have four children, or yeah, yeah. yeah I have I have three, <laughs> and um, you know, I've noticed, and I'm three children, as in mm-hmm. adults in their thirties. Mm-hmm. So, right. Um, and one in and one in her twenties. But I'm hearing, you know, oh well, I'm not really into drinking. I'm drinking much less, and mm-hmm. you know. And, and I find that, oh, that's, that's great. You know, mm-hmm. and the way I was raised is like European style, you know, uh, we didn't do hard liquor, particularly that mm-hmm. became a, a later phenomena to, mm-hmm. you know, to have a, a cocktail or whatever, but it was like, you know, wine with dinner is like normal. <laughs> you know? So even if it's a tiny bit of wine and lots of water, it doesn't matter. But it was like it was so part of the ritual that yeah, it is. It is. It's so ingrained in our culture, isn't it? Yeah. I never thought of, you know, going without. And now I have a one daughter who's, you know, who says like, oh, everything, all her symptoms are gone yeah. that she has. And she feels so much better. And I'm yeah. looking at her like, I don't remember you bad, you know, and but it's all an internal thing. She feels completely better so she she got me to read things about why I should stop you know mm-hmm. how poisonous it is how and and it's um it's an interesting thing I know that that's not an approach that would work with me I mean if toxins I remove from my diet I have an extremely clean diet I eat organic you know I do all of those things but I also have you know mostly organic wine <laughs> so mm-hmm. you know so I, I'm thinking well you know, and then then you think, do you start justifying that a habit that you love mm. 
um, because it just makes the food taste good. And, you know, I don't get a headache and I don't. I mean, I, I, I would argue that it doesn't make the food taste good. <laughs> I would argue that that's your perception now. I, I mean, and, and everything you're saying is exactly where I was. I used to justify yeah. myself. At, well, yeah, but the wine I have is good quality wine. It's organic wine. You know, <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, but it's actually BS. It really is. No, no, it's way. all it's it's all just to, it's just toxic liquid is what it is. It <laughs> that's is. that's that's the reality of it. But I was exactly the same as you. I would absolutely justify it by oh, it's good quality or whatever. Um, and and yes, the perception is it makes the food taste better. No, it actually doesn't. When you stop drinking, you get your your taste buds can actually properly taste food. And in fact, what's really interesting is when you don't drink anymore, if you accidentally cop a taste of a glass of wine it, it happened to me it's happened to me twice I think in five years completely by accident I've been I've I've picked up a, a, a someone else's glass just literally completely by mistake and taken a sip oh my goodness the shock it's absolutely vile it's it's like <laughs> drinking petrol literally like drinking petrol when you're used to it when you're accustomed to it you don't notice You've literally acclimatized yourself, yes. as we all do, because let's face it, no children. I mean, you, you, your very first drink you ever have or if you give a drink to a child, you know, they, they want to try to like it. But actually, they choke a little bit because it's disgusting. Alcohol okay. is disgusting. I mean, it's literally disgusting. It's only the fact that it's covered up with all the flavors and the sugar. Right. Yeah. And actually, when you're not drinking anymore and you cop a little taste of it by accident, you realize just how absolutely vile it is it's it's actually horrible so mm. I, I don't I, I don't believe you <laughs> well just, I mean you know just to counter I, the I, argument <laughs> no 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 fair enough no, it, that's the whole idea you know but I have gone I've t you know done periods where I'm doing a complete cleanse and so yeah you know, I, I don't drink then but mm. I don't have that feeling when I have my next you know glass I I mm -hmm. I'm I'm still loving it, right? It depends how long. It depends how long. And and also when you yeah. say you're loving it, mostly what's happening is in your mind, because that's the decision yes. you, that you've made. And yes. in fact, they do say, don't they, that the the dopamine hit comes in a few seconds before you actually take the sip. Yeah. And so I it's not that... really, it's not really the alcohol. It's just yeah. what you, it's just the, the, the way we process it and the way we tell ourselves, oh, isn't this lovely, this lovely, gorgeous. But actually the reality is if you were to, if you'd had a period of abstinence, for example, and then you came back to drinking, you're really looking forward to having that drink with dinner. And then let's just imagine for whatever reason, I don't know, you know, that suddenly you've had the building work done or whatever. And actually the reality is you've got to have that glass of wine in a cheap, nasty plastic cup and it's warm and the, the cup is cracked and it's yeah. a little bit dirty. Oh, that's not as good, is it? Yeah, that's yeah. not what you meant at all. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's not really the alcohol you want at all. It's all the associations that we like. No, and 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 I think that's true. I mean, I, I do believe <clears throat> that it's part of the, the whole setting up of the, you know, whatever it is, whether it's mm. the so-called family time or mm -hmm. the yeah the perfect everything else, you know. Mm. 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 <laughs> and and we play incredible games with, you know, with ourselves, right? When you yeah. Um, when you look at it that way but yeah. Uh, yeah no I just thought I'd be honest about that no no totally but well, that's you see this is why my 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 yeah. one of my mantras is keep the ritual change the ingredients so right. know know that you like having a, a a lovely nice glass of wine in inverted commas with dinner but have a wine glass and have yeah. something alcohol free in it yeah I, not I, to I, like trust me I will do that too mm. <laughs> Yeah, I, I still haven't been able, you see, I don't like anything sweet. I like um, really like um, dry red mm -hmm. wine, right? So mm -hmm. um, it's very hard to replace that. Like I, mm -hmm. I've tried with, you know, pomegranate, you know, but it. Eh. No, you need, you need one of the alcohol free wines that are, are out there now. I mean, right. it, red wine is the hardest to do, but you can do it. There's a great one in certainly in the UK called Naughty, N-O-U-G-H-T-Y. It's a very dry alcohol free red wine. Oh, okay. Okay. No, well, it, it, time's changing. Um, in the yeah, UK, I mean, we are, we're like... ahead of, we're ahead of the world in alcohol free drinks. Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> certainly I've tried the what's available here and they're so disgusting. They're so mm. sweet. My liver mm. would go into failure. <laughs> like, I just hate sugar, you know. So anyhow, but OK, so what was your 
like what is the trap in when you're talking like you know obviously I'm sharing my own mm-hmm. ability to deny the ability to you know I can see the story I'm creating mm. and you know why is ethanol pretty well the only um toxic thing I put in my body mm. that I'm um you know not forced <laughs> to yeah. take yeah yeah um well I was exactly the same and you know I think it's because it's because of a variety of things I think it's completely cultural it's literally ingrained in us it's it's the only drug in inverted commas we have to justify not taking right because right. it's the done thing it's what everyone does it's the rite of passage yeah. it's the you know the play dates the weddings the funerals the you know Sunday afternoon tea. it's everything it's everywhere you can't buy a birthday card for your 25 year old son other than something you know with a glass of beer on the front you know it, it, it's right. literally so ingrained in our culture in every aspect of our culture um and 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 of course that tracks back to you know um the marketing behind it you, you know governments and and big business alike want us to drink alcohol because it brings in the cash you know and there's a school of thought that says you know it keeps us ni- keeps us nicely controlled <laughs> there is that as well um but but basically you know we are most of us are under that spell why would we not be it's what we've grown up with and i think once you have developed that taste as it were um you know it 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 is it, addictive it, it's literally addictive so you know for example people talk about well um can you be a mindful drinker and the answer is Manon Boliger here and I want to thank you for taking actionable steps towards engaging your healing journey and helping others discover their path by watching sharing subscribing and reviewing these podcasts Every review and share helps spread the word, these different perspectives and choices and options for healing. And to thank you, I'd like to invite you to sign up to my free seven sequence email tips on health and healing for everyday life. You can go to healerscafe.com tips. Thanks so much. Well, yes, if you have an off switch. So I sometimes joke and say, you know, I'm a mindful kiwi fruit eater. And what I mean by that is, you know, I quite like kiwi fruits. They're okay, And I don't have any at the moment. But if my son brings one home tomorrow, I might have a kiwi fruit. And then I might go out in the evening and by some fluke, the dessert that I have might be kiwi fruit. Mm -hmm. But then I might not think about kiwi fruits for three months. Mm -hmm. I certainly wouldn't be Googling. Oh, have I got a problem with kiwi fruits? Right. right. Or waking up in the middle of the night because kiwi fruits are not addictive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. OK. Yeah. Um, alcohol is alcohol mm-hmm. is addictive. And, you know, we could go we could dig deep into all kinds of layers of this, you know, um, which we probably don't need to. But but it's 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 addictive. And the actual reality is there is no safe limit of alcohol. Actually, mm-hmm. I don't believe for one second all those BS reports that it's good for you. I used to love those stories. <laughs> oh, I used to jump on those stories in the press. Oh, a glass of red wine is good for the heart. No, I don't think so. If you want resveratrol or antioxidants, you know, you know full well. Have a have a grape or have some, you know, have some have some great fresh fruit veg, right? Or or whatever. Blueberries, have some blueberries, a dark chocolate, you know. It it's it's not true. Right. It's actually not true. And and I've done some really very powerful interviews with, um, uh, you know, leading um, very eminent doctors and psychologists who have have properly done the studies, not the studies funded by the drug companies, which no, is no, most no. of them by the yes. alcohol companies. But they've done their own proper <clears throat> independent studies, which find that, you know, alcohol is um, is it's aging, it's damaging. Um, it doesn't do us any good at all. And obviously, depending on the level you're having, then, you know, as with anything, we, we choose our risks, don't we? Some of us, you know, drink a bit too much coffee. We might have sugar. We, you know, it, everything's a balance, I suppose. But yeah. the reality is nobody needs alcohol. Mm-hmm. Nobody. Yeah. And everybody feels better without it. I've never met anyone who said, oh, God, I so regret ditching the booze. <laughs> oh, you're joking. It. 
it, the the benefits of sobriety filter into every single area of your life. And that's the thing I hadn't expected. All I when I went into it, as it were, I just needed to stop feeling terrible. Mm. And I and 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 I couldn't imagine how I would even get through life without drinking when it was my sort of identity. Um, but, but you know, I sort of, I suppose I sort of hoped I'd feel better, but I I certainly could never have imagined the incredible breadth of benefits that sobriety brings both physically and emotionally mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well I guess too if if alcohol is used as a um de-stressor you know where, yeah, exactly you know the idea is okay sure if one glass you may have that and then not get into an argument just chill <laughs> but if you're into two glasses or more then you're it's actually not even true anymore that it that I mean, not that it actually de-stresses you, but physiologically, you have the impression that you're less um, you're less clued in. You're like, you know, you're you're it's like, you know, hidden a little bit. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think um, once you have more any even these uh, justifications are are no longer no, exactly. Because you kind of lose your inhibitions and so, oh, you know, sod it. And then you have more. And also, you know, I think that the 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 really interesting thing about people who moderate is, you know, um, I suppose the question for those people would be, uh, is is there a danger that your moderation could 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 turn into a problem? And the answer is absolutely yes because if your association is that you have you know you have a very very stressful day and then you need a drink and you have your drink mm. um, even if you only have one drink okay the association is very strong it's yeah. I'm under stress reach for a drink yeah. so then if something really does go bad in your life mm -hmm. you'll be reaching for a drink but then you'll be reaching for another one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you know one of the best tips around um you know people who decide they want to moderate if uh if you've got if there's people who decide okay well i i want to carry on drinking but i'm going i'm going to be a mindful drinker i'm going to drink moderately then mm -hmm. my tips would be well number one i'd always say do a minimum of 30 days of not drinking at all first mm -hmm. and then you can just reset everything yeah. but number two the top tips would be Set your own parameters around when you are going to drink then. So is it, I don't know, Wednesdays and Saturdays or whatever it is for you, set your own parameters, but then add in another rule. And that rule is that you commit to never drinking if you are upset or fearful or angry or stressed, mm -hmm. even if it's a Wednesday, <laughs> designated Wednesday, right? Mm -hmm. And that knocks out a whole lot of drinking time. Yeah. Because when well, you realise that you can't drink when you're upset or angry or fearful or stressed, yeah, why would I drink anyway then? <laughs> it's funny, you, know, you learn things from your parents, right? Often, <laughs> but my yeah. mom, would say, you know, if something's wrong, you, you, I'll never, you'll never see me with a glass of wine. Oh, but, good for her. But if things are good, you know. Well, that's it. That was the other rule I was about to say. I sometimes say to clients, <laughs> add a further rule, which is you won't yeah. drink when you're celebrating either. Ooh, that, which that, really does knock that, out all right. the drinking time. Yeah, pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, I, what I've been doing more consciously with um, not, not just um, wine, but just everything in general is um, checking in, not taking it for granted. You know, it, like I, I would serve myself a glass and then am I actually enjoying this? Like actually, you know, is it, is yeah, it, that's the mindfulness piece, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. yeah. And, and it's interesting because, um, yeah, sometimes after like two sips, it's like, Meh, I'm not actually enjoying this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then so, like, so you might, even before you pour it, you might want to ask yourself what, what exactly what's the feeling I'm I'm really trying to create here what 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 is it that I actually yeah. want you know what's the feeling I want yeah. often it's in my case it was that I wanted to feel grown up you know I wanted to feel like I was having a reward after a busy day 
Mm. So, and that was the association. I, I just need a reward. Okay. And then when you, when you're able to acknowledge what, what the feeling is you're really trying to create, yeah. you can then become much more conscious of having your toolkit ready as it were, so that you have other ways of providing yourself with that resource, which is of course much healthier. There are many more healthy ways to <laughs> feel yeah. supported and rewarded yeah. and being kind to yourself than actually having toxic liquid which is not doing any good mm -hmm. yeah no I think re reward is it would be also a, a yeah. big one for me it's yeah. like oh now I've I deserve yeah. you know and yeah. it's like yeah. yeah and the thing is <laughs> yeah you deserve more than that right so. mm -hmm. well yeah and and you know for years I thought of my you know glass of wine or two or three as my self-care that was my right. treat you know now I think back it's like, what was I doing it, mm. it's not self-care it's self-harming certainly yeah. the amount I was drinking after a while <laughs> every single day mm. yeah interesting so uh, I we ended up talking about this mostly but I I wanted to uh, also with family constellation mm. and have you seen have you got stories or impact that you've seen you know in family yeah yeah I mean I mean family constellations is a it's a massive to topic it's Huge. it's quite difficult to you know describe it in a few sentences but you know for en for anyone who who has experienced constellations it's um it's a really powerful way of of sort of visually seeing um our the the family dynamics and the entanglements that can come from both our immediate family and and and, and ancestors and it is really fascinating when you see a constellation where alcohol is there in the mix um, and sometimes I've done I've hosted constellations where I've brought in someone to represent alcohol mm. and it's really powerful and I remember one constellation we did quite recently where um I brought someone in I just kind of went and asked a, 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 a guy I just said you know can you come with me kind of thing and I placed him but I didn't tell him who he was representing I didn't tell anyone oh, so wow. I just placed him there and the other participants you know sensed the energy and it was absolutely fascinating one one woman who was the um the representing the issue holder uh was sort of was backing off from I had no idea who this person represented but was literally kind of backing off recoiling in horror and then the person representing her mother was literally felt sort of everything released she went oh I feel much better now I feel safe now and it was absolutely bizarre because of course the whole constellation was around the fact that this woman had watched her alcoholic mother um you know destroy her own life effectively it was so powerful Wow. Um, and, and, you know, there's no doubt that alcohol is is so often there in the family system, you know, and can go back literally generations. And, and, and of course, of course it can. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, we get stuck. Um, it, it, it's very it's very, very powerful when we when things play out in constellations and we can we can we can see them. What, what's always interesting is if you do have someone represent alcohol, mm -hmm. when you ask them how they're how they are as it were mm -hmm. even if they don't know what they're representing they always just kind of go I'm neutral yeah of course they are <laughs> I guess like, they're, they're good <laughs> alcohol doesn't care it's self <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah Oh, well, okay. Uh, you know, this is actually our time, but um, <laughs> but no if worries. you're up for it, um, I would love to to once go. I I actually um uh, did family constellations. I mean, as in, I was a I um, issue holder it, or a representative. Yeah. No, no, no. Well, no. I well, maybe it's different. I don't know. It, it was a therapist who was kind of trying to pull out all the history and mm -hmm. make sense of everything. So I came as the, as the patient. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 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 The yeah. issue holder, we call that. Issue yeah. holder. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see. Oh. Or sometimes we call it tissue holder because you normally end up crying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I'd love to find out more because I feel mm -hmm. like um, 
it it started, but then nothing came of it because mm-hmm. he moved. Everything kind of all, you know. So I'd lo- I'd love to know more. And I I think um, I've I've heard a lot of people feel that it's very, it really gives insights. Yeah, it does. It really that, does. Um, it's such powerful work. It um, yeah. and and across all kinds of issues and um, just you know sometimes just one piece of work can literally change your perspective on everything and and also it changes the energy that's what's really powerful about it you know I've done constellations where someone will you know say that they're completely estranged from their I don't know brother or whatever haven't spoken for 30 years and then and they'll call me up a week later and they'll go you're not going to believe it he called me on the way home (laughs) and that's kind of stuff happens a lot because you know it's energy isn't it it's all about energy yeah okay well let's let's do that <laughs> maybe cool. in a, a future time if you have um a yeah. bit of time because um it's too short to do both but uh yeah, sure. yeah, i really enjoyed um learning more <laughs> sure. yeah can i can i just mention the sober club which is the community oh, that i run absolutely um is that you know that i i'm i'm just i'm really proud of the sober club because we focus not just only on ditching the booze because of course that bit's important but then the what next so, OK, how do you create that life that you don't want to escape from? So that's where I'm able to bring in all of the other stuff, all of the uh, holistic living stuff and the great stuff around nutrition and, and everything else, which once you've ditched the booze for so many people, that's when they open up to, to all the other stuff. And they find, oh, my goodness, what? Right. So I can actually get fit and healthy. I can look at what supplements might support me and, and on and on. So, um, yeah, so it works really, really well that we can kind of start to uncover all these different layers. Mm, yeah, yeah. Well, I would imagine too. It's um, timing is everything with, uh, you know, post this pandemic, anyways. <laughs> yeah. So many people drank. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely. Funny. Yeah. And uh, have health to be concerned about even more so now than yeah. other poisons have been in their systems. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> it's complicated. Very true. Anyway, okay. Thank you so much. And thank you. And um, we'll be in touch. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for joining us at the Healers Cafe with Manau Belize. Continue your healing journey by visiting thehealerscafe.com and her website and discover how to listen to your body and reboot for optimal health.